So do, do you think accent is important? Would you want to achieve like a like a native or perfect accent? I think that's out of the question by this point because I did start learning. You have to, okay. So you've interviewed Dolgen, you've interviewed Matt. They both started as, you know, teenagers, about 12, 13 years old. Um, I started mm. learning Japanese at 25. It's out of the question. It's not going to happen. <laughs> But that doesn't mean that you can't improve. So, oh yeah, I'm trying to improve my Japanese very much right now. It's important for my job. I have to use a lot of, I'm going to have to use. Sonkeigo, Kenjogo, formal Japanese. It's not, you know, America kara kimashita, it's America kara mairimashita, <laughs> things like that. Or, you know, you don't say to your bond, or you don't say to your, your client, yoroshiku ne, it's yoroshiku onegai itashimasu. And, and all this business language. Um, yeah, I have to polish it up, but will I ever get to the point, even with Chinese, where I could mimic a native maybe in a short conversation maybe if we're just talking for 10 minutes or less but uh, no i'll never and i would debate too that nobody who learned um a second language like that after after puberty that that they would be a native or even if you did start learning at 12 or 13 yeah come to japan go to a you know go to a japanese office you're gonna be the odd one out you are i mean Maybe just by, you know, th this much or this much or whatever, but you're not going to be native. Um, it's just, it's just kind of how it is. But yeah, I'm definitely trying to get as close as I can. But at the same time, you have to realize for every extra hour you put into that, it's kind of like diminishing margin on returns. Somebody criticized my Chinese, which is totally fine. Um, she made a good video about it and said, well, you can improve this part, that part, that part. Sure. Or instead of just focusing those hundreds of hours on Chinese to get less and less benefits, I decided after three years to take on Japanese and I've gotten so many more benefits than just mm. improving my Chinese by that much more. Right. And that's how I it, feel. Isn't the fact that like, um, since there's always something to work on and improve, theoretically you could continually get better at your accent. You could like keep um, improving like Dogen's course. He talks about like, specific ways to pronounce Um, words mm. and so even like past 20 even past the critical age you could still like consciously improve your accent right um good question of course you can improve your accent and you should strive to do that and i'm still striving to do that with uh japanese and to a lesser extent with chinese as well but you have to realize when you get to a certain point where you're able to say work in japan or you passed a uh, JLPT N1, you've gone to a Japanese university, you've gotten to the point where you're at, you, you are at the advanced level and every improvement after that is going to take a heck of a lot of time. It's not like right. the beginning level where you're making huge progress, like visible progress in, in two weeks, three weeks. You can see that you can hear the difference. It's very obvious when you're at that level and you're spending the same amount of hours, you're getting like this much, this much, this yeah. much. It's diminishing margin on returns. You, your time investment is huge. What you get out of it is, I'm not saying it's nothing, but it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, yeah, improve your accent. Those videos are valuable, but realize, you know, at a certain point, do you want to continue with this or do you mm -hmm. want to learn another skill? What's going to give you more benefits? You want to, you've gotten to the point where your Japanese is really, really good. Keep going with it, but you can also maybe take right. on another language at that point. Yeah. So, so would you agree that theoretically it's possible to get pretty close to native, even though there are like diminishing margins on returns? Like, like, like what does that mean? If you just committed to one language, what does that mean though? Like, at in in a 10 minute conversation, sure, absolutely. Um, but if you're actually, and, and that's just speaking, right? That's just the accent. Mm -hmm. We're not even talking about vocabulary. We're not even talking about right. our formal Japanese. We're not talking about writing. We're not talking about reading. No, I, I will say if, if even my friend Akaki, who also has done YouTube, he's a Finnish guy. He's lived here for 12 years. He writes Japanese contracts like he's that good. He's probably the odd one out still. If he were in the Japanese office, he's still the foreigner. And even Matt and Dogen, As good as they are, if they went to a Japanese office, they would still be the foreigner. They would still not yeah. be as good as their colleagues, and that's right. just how it goes. I had a boyfriend who right. who grew up in um, 
who grew up in China for the first six years of his life, moved over to America, spoke almost exclusively English after that, he still had a little bit off about his mm -hmm. English, even though he was that, he was almost native. But even six years, you know, that developmental time uh, in a young child's brain, if they didn't get English for the first six years of their life, they're even mm -hmm. a little bit off. So if he was even a little bit off, imagine the people that learned at 13, 